So there's this uh, big report out of The Hollywood Reporter on Amazon, uh, Amazon Studios, basically going over a bunch of problems uh, at uh, Amazon Prime Video and Amazon Originals uh, and, and just kind of all these different big shows that have been kind of unfortunately kind of flops uh like daisy jones and the six which apparently cost 140 million dollars for season one which is a lot of money for a a show a drama about a, a band basically um i haven't seen it but it's based on a book uh kind of a music biopic type thing and 140 million is a lot of money and did not perform as well as amazon predicted uh, but the real headline in this report is that only 37% of viewers finished The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Uh, and <laughs> this is not a good number. This is a very, very bad number. Apparently, 50% would be considered a success, but a rather weak success, like bottom-of-the-barrel type good news. Uh, and 37% is well below that. That is just over a third of viewers actually watching all eight episodes. Uh, now, <laughs> you, you have a franchise that's, you know, The Lord of the Rings, enormously popular, uh, a huge budget, over $450 million. And you have, you know, an, an enormous production values, an epic and not super long eight episode season coming out once a week. There is no godly reason for this show not to hit 50%, at least, other than it was just very, very bad, and people just started dropping like flies. I can only imagine what the finish rate for uh, the Willow TV series was on, D on Disney+. Plus. Uh, I think, I think, I know, I know people that, that watched and enjoyed Amazon's show while, while turning off Willow after the first episode. That's how bad it was. But anyways, uh, yeah, 37%. That, that is just over a third. I, of course, watched the whole thing. Uh, one, of, one of the minority in, the, in this story. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's not surprising to me because the show, I still think the show started off decent. Uh, I mean, there was obviously problems, and in retrospect, I see those more clearly now. But you know, there, you know, I, I was, you know, I thought it was. I'm often a little patient with things when I think that they're setting up something down the road. Like a lot of shows, sort of start out. They might start out a little slow, but they're setting stuff up. We saw that with Andor started off a little slow, but it was setting up a really amazing story. Uh, this show. I think. I think you know. I kind of liked the orcs at first. There was a pretty good scene with the orc like attacking uh, Bronwyn or whatever the hell her name was. Uh, and then it just got worse and worse and worse. The more Galadriel was on screen, the, the more obnoxious she became. Uh, the more apparent that this show was written really, really, really poorly. I am pretty sure it was written by AI. Uh, it just sounds like AI when you go back and you listen to it. It's like, oh... Amazon was using AI to write this show. And if not, they were just, maybe they should have been. Because who, <laughs> the writing in this show is so dismal. Um, interestingly, uh, there's, there's, there's other stuff in this report that, that basically, you know, the shows that are succeeding are, uh, you know, Jack Reacher, uh, the other sort of, action thriller type shows stuff that's that's cheaper uh i guess this i haven't watched it yet but swarm costs 30 million to make and has been relatively successful when you're only spending 30 million on a season of television compared to 140 million like with daisy jones and the six or 450 million with uh the rings of power you have a much uh, lower threshold for what what you can define as successful, uh, and 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 the, just the amount of money that they're pouring into a lot of these shows, and then not really focusing on on what viewers actually want to see is pretty uh, is pretty extraordinary. One one of the interesting things in this report, which is very 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 long, but uh, an anonymous source said all this perpetuation of white guys with guns it's a self fulfilling pro prophecy. Uh, relying on data is soul crushing. There's never. I know the testing wasn't that great, but I believe in this. Uh, this so this this is presented as like, you know, 
that the problem at Amazon is that they're not listening to that they're not pursuing stuff that goes against the data. They're not offering up women centric and LGBTQ centric shows. Uh, but the the data suggests that you know this this entire report, I should say, kind of is is sort of incoherent because. Again, they're talking about how the the white guys with guns shows are doing well and aren't as expensive and have a broader appeal. And they talk about how stuff like A League of Their Own is pretty much a total failure. Uh, it, It was greenlit for a second season of four episodes just to tie things up because it just didn't perform well at all. Uh, I think I think that, you know, you can't you can't say the problem here is that we're not doing enough. Uh, diversity and inclusion stuff, and, and that's the problem at Amazon. I mean, again, the, what was the, the such a huge part of the marketing for Rings of Power was how diverse it was. That is not enough to make a show successful. Without a good story and good writing, then the diversity is just another, another part of the failure. Um, obviously, diverse shows can be very successful, but they're not going to. But diversity isn't going to be the driving factor there. Um, and it and it shouldn't be. I mean, we should want we should have diverse shows that are just diverse shows and that are good because they're well written and have have great characters and stories. Uh, you, you're never you're never going to succeed just on diversity. Uh, the people that you're trying to to appeal to, you know, uh, you know, LGBTQ people or or minorities are not going to want to watch these shows either if they're not very good. And it's just sort of condescending to say. Oh, but hey, look, we're we're doing diversity and inclusion, but we're just we're not making very good shows. These aren't the great stories, but look, they they have brown people in them. Like that is not, that is sort of condescending, don't you think? Um, you know this 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 idea that there's sort of this you know in the press and in you know you see like. Um, <laughs> When Kotaku wrote about this, they wrote, Another nasty story from the report claims Amazon Studios relies too heavily on data and focus groups, leading to productions that focused on women or contained LGBTQ themes being put on the back burner. Yeah, but... <laughs> but you've in the other parts of this report, it discusses specifically how plenty of things like Reacher is a, is a safe bet, whereas these other shows are underperforming. Like, at a certain point, you have to rely on data or you keep dropping enormous sums of money on things that aren't going to resonate with viewers. Now, obviously, I don't want everything to just be uh, the next story about a white dude with a gun. I mean, I, those are entertaining stories. I thought Reacher was done quite well. Uh, I've been watching, I'm, I'm almost done with The Night Agent on, on Netflix, which has been a huge success over there. And it's about a, a white guy with a gun and also about, you know, there's lots of pe- people of color in that show, too. It's okay, The Night Agent. I'll have another video on that when I finish. Again, I'm almost done. But it's one of those, like, entertaining thriller, mystery, political thrillers that, that doesn't take a lot of brain power. Uh, and those, you know, obviously people want that kind of stuff. They want those exciting, action-packed mysteries that that keep them, you know, clicking on the next episode. That is in demand, and you have to make that stuff. If you're a TV studio, you also hopefully can make some of the quirky, interesting things like I love on Hulu. I love reservation dogs, I, you know, and there's, you know, there's plenty of these smaller niche quirky shows. Those can be made for, for, for less money and hit a very specific audience and do very well. Those should be, you know, here's if, if I was doing, if I, if I had a strategy vision for these, for if I was in charge of Amazon Studios, for instance, I would try to find lots of these less expensive niche shows and really try to cultivate those and get cult followings, right? Anything from like The Legend of Vox Machina, which is an animated D&D show based on the Critical Role campaigns, to, to stuff like Reservation Dogs, to, uh, you know, if you want... Um, to focus on, you know, if you want a good female-centric drama, well, that's obviously possible because you can have something like Yellow Jackets over on Showtime. Uh, it's it's not you don't need to drive everything via data, but you do also need to say, well, we need we need big hits too. You need to have those those more niche shows, but you also need the big hits, things like The Night Agent or Jack Reacher or or whatever. Um, 
And then you have to, obviously, you cannot just drop money like it like it grows on trees. I mean, it may grow on trees for Amazon sometimes, but $450 million for the Rings of Power is probably not a great idea, especially if you're not really capable as a studio yet of making a show of that scope and size. Uh, you know, if... You, I'll talk about this in another video, but we've learned that, that Warner Brothers is making a uh, Harry Potter series, or is probably going to make a Harry Potter series. The, the one thing that doesn't make me sort of roll my eyes so hard they fall out of my head about that news is that it's HBO. HBO knows what it's doing. Almost, okay, not everything, but almost everything that comes out of HBO is pretty good. Uh, you know... Um, I'm watching Succession right now, and it's so fantastic, and House of the Dragon was terrific. Uh, one of the glaring examples of, of HBO screwing the pooch is uh, the end of Game of Thrones, but look how good it was for so long, and then and then they just, you know, HBO really needed to just tell the creators of that show to fuck off and hire some new people to finish it, because they just, they, should, they there was no godly reason for them to just rush that ending. But anyways... Amazon, on the other hand, has just not had the depth of experience making these these sort of premier offerings, right? And plunging into a, a you know the next Game of Thrones territory by trying to make the Rings of Power was a, was a hugely naive and foolish and arrogant uh, venture. And, and spending 140 million on a show like Daisy Jones and the Six is is almost equally arrogant and foolish. Uh, that's a show that should should cost a fraction of that. And uh, it's that's just, just absolutely <laughs> insane. Uh, but I think right now, like if I were Amazon, I would be thinking, okay, what is successful? We've got the boys. We've got these, you know, we've got shows that are that are they're definitely appealing to a wider audience, and we should focus on making those. Absolutely, we shouldn't just listen listen to focus groups and data because that can create a very soulless atmosphere. But we should be looking at shows that have a broad, wide appeal. Uh, that 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 are engaging, that people want to, you know, they can't wait for the next episode to come out, and then we can also focus on the the, the diversity and inclusion stuff and the LGBTQ stuff, but that's going to be more niche, and and we're going to approach it that way. We're not going to expect it to be as successful, but we're we're going to try to to court those more uh, those those more fringe audiences that not the mainstream as well as the mainstream. We're going to do both. We're just not going to spend you know, hundreds of millions on stuff that's not going to bring back those kind of returns. And that seems like a pretty obvious um, approach to me. But it just sounds like, if you read this whole report, it sounds like a a total mess over at Amazon. Uh, the le leadership seems to be firing from the hip and rushing headlong into what they think will work and then dialing back because it doesn't. And so they're, then they then they lean real heavily on focus groups. And you want, you want people who have instinct and vision, but who aren't afraid of also listening to the data. Like you need a healthy balance between those things because otherwise you find yourself with a with a CEO or a or a top, you know, top decision makers who don't have instinct and so they 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 make huge expensive mistakes and then and then they rely completely on focus groups which are only useful up to a point. So it's kind of funny though. I I hate to say it, but uh when, <laughs> whenever I I write about a show that just is obviously very bad and is not, uh, and then people people act like I'm some monster for this, and then it turns out that, you know, the majority of people agreed that it's just not very good. That You know, that, that, does, uh, that does give me f faith in humanity and a little validation. So thank you for watching. Uh, I personally just cannot wait for Rings of Power Season 2. Uh, I am just shipping Galadriel and Sauron so hard. I want them to make little, little uh, demon baby elves together. That would be such an awesome and so Tolkien esque story. Anyways, uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching. Peace.